one of those questions was, do you have some films or, or does he, do you think some films are becoming too aesthetically pleasing that it is distracted from the story? Any tips for painting clothing? I'll answer the, the story one. The painting clothing one is, um, the only tip I have is uh, just learn how to paint folds. It's one of the big tips I can give to you. And folds aren't, <laughs> oh, excuse me. Folds aren't as challenging as they appear. It's just about understanding the different kinds of folds. Um, I don't actually know most of the folds, but I just kind of do the mo most basic stuff. So for instance, you have like a sphere, you have something falling off of that sphere. Like you have like a cloak falling onto it. And this is the result of this. Usually these types of shapes. And I just kind of mirror the shapes that I've studied. And if you have in mid fall, like some parts catch wind while others, and you just have the same kind of thing happening here. Oops. To create that illusion of falling drapery. But it's just um, folds are uh, more or less like the biggest thing people get wrong. But if you learn how to do folds, uh, then the rest is just lighting and materials, like getting the forms right, which again, I think a lot of people don't do accurately. Anyway, um, do I think movies are getting too aesthetically pleasing and distracts from the story? Uh, I don't think so. If you mean like, like movies are just focused on like aesthetics, they're not really focused on storytelling or whatever. Um, I don't think that's entirely true. Those movies are just more popular. They just do really well in the theaters. Um, good stories still occur all over the place. Sometimes they don't appear in film, sometimes they appear in television. But even in film, there's a lot of good ones. Uh, in the unluckiest places. Uh, just people just don't look, right? Like you might think, oh man, there's no good movies these days. All movies in 2019. But then if you go and like actually look at the movies that came out in that year, you might be like, oh yeah, right? So obviously there you got your superhero movies and you got your remakes, you know? There's a lot of them in the front. But as we start to go through, you'll start to ping out the ones like Parasite, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yes. I guess they're categorizing them. So there's even more. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, Shaft came out this year. Is that true? Um, Marriage Story, I heard that one's freaking great. I haven't watched it, though. Um... I haven't seen any of these movies, so I can't speak to them. I heard Stuper was really funny. But I mean, look, like there's a lot, you know? I think a movie two came out. Dang, why does it feel like these movies came out a long time ago? Why does it feel like 2019 was such a long year? Anyways, there's some in here that are really cool that I remember hearing about watching. And these are just like the most popular movies. Oh yeah, freaking us! I remember that one. That one's a good one. So forth and so on. The Irishman, Ed Astro is pretty cool. I like that one. Haven't seen Parasite, but I heard that one's freaking dope. But anyways, and these are just like again the most popular. But you can go to like um, websites and you'll see there's like hundreds hundreds and hundreds of movies and many of them are uh mostly story driven because they're cheaper to make and every once in a while you have like the the blockbuster movies like avengers that just like make billions and billions and billions of dollars <clears throat> marvel makes movies like three times a year i believe too i don't think they make a lot of movies a year it's just like they're just such a spectacle and people get so hyped 
that I think it's just easy to hate on them. Uh, granted, there's a lot more of them than there is any other kind of movie, but that's true usually for any kind of like seasonal thing. You know, like if you think about back in the day, like way, way back when, like Westerns used to be a very popular genre of movie. And then like you had like your uh, action hero movies, you know, talking about where it's just like, there's a man in a pog competition. And now there's a terrorist or some sort of Russian spy trying to terrorize the pog competition. But this one pog player used to be an ex-marine and now he's like murdering everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like those are those types of movies. That genre kind of came back, but it's like more like the like old man is a badass genre, right? Like the movie like Taken. Just those types of movies take off whenever they do well. Um, the found footage movie franchise took off too after, um, what was that movie? Oh, I'm like, forget it. Oh yeah, Paranormal Activity. So there's like, you know, it just happens. So I think that it could just be like your observations are just a little bit inaccurate. That makes you think this is happening or maybe you personally get distracted while other people are just kind of fine. Um, but generally speaking, people do like to see things that are cool. That's why movies that are focused on just cool things usually come out more frequently. Uh, a way I like to think about it is like everybody watches porn. You know what I mean? At least the majority of people, especially men. And so uh, it's kind of like visual porn, you know, a lot of these films. And it's that's a genre. And that's something that's, you know, some people might feel is a little too... Um, it's too visceral, it's too like primal, the reason why people like these types of things. But I mean, that's just the reality of it, right? We're animals, we have urges and impulses, and if you move towards these impulses and urges, usually they're gonna do well. Whether you like that or not, that's just the reality of the world. Until humans stop being humans, you're just gonna have to accept that these types of things come out. If you personally do not like them, and I'm not saying that you are saying this, I don't think you are, you're just asking a question. But I do try to remind people that uh, it's your responsibility to find the content that you like. You know, you don't have to just regurgitate or engage, like indulge in the stuff just because it happens to be popular and it's all around you. You can you can actively ignore it. Like whenever I see people talk all this crap about like these movies and remakes, like oh my god, I can't believe they're making Lion King again. Um, I didn't watch it. I didn't watch Lion King. I had no interest. Doesn't mean that I think it's like the worst idea ever to make it again, or whatever. It literally has no effect on me at all, <laughs> you know. And I think people forget that. Like Disney made a bunch of other films too that aren't like Disney uh, live action films. Like uh, they they're a subsidiary subsidiary of of um, or like sorry they are a part of other franchises like Pixar and Marvel movies which have a lot of great films, right? And a lot, of, a lot of really cool content. Star Wars, I don't know. I think they may have messed up with Star Wars, except for Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda, baby, baby Yoda. Baby Yoda may have saved Star Wars, in my humble opinion. Anyway, any other questions, fam? Um, I have a question. Go for it. Um, so I'm currently a freshman in college and a, um, I tell my roommates are doing the, you know, fundamentals thing where they're doing like 3D and drawing at the same time, but I'm kind of going more for the just like just trying to get better at drawing before moving on to like 3D stuff. Like how do you feel about you know, being like super versatile in both 3D and 2D or like, should I like, you know, really keep on focusing on one? Uh, I think you should just focus on one. You have plenty of time to learn all the other stuff, right? So they're learning like 3D and all that cool stuff. Um, but there's only so much time in a day and there's only so much information you can put into your brain, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, you'll start to see this happen 
where you'll start to get really, really, really skilled at the thing that you're doing and your, your peers are not getting really skilled at anything. They're kind of just generically good at lots of things. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what happened with me and my peers. And I consistently see this happening. And the reason why is it's just because you just don't like have all that time to really learn all these different things. Like uh, remember I mentioned earlier about like respecting the like the discipline of like a thing, like, you know, just respect that it takes time to get good at something. Uh, a school sometimes does not do this because they have a curriculum, you know, and you have to like match that curriculum. And in this specific curriculum, you have to do 3D, you know, and you have to learn 2D and you have to do all. So your, your, your classmates are like all doing like 17 different homework assignments from like several different classes, you know? Mm -hmm. And so there's time is really like spread out, you know, and they're like stressed out about trying to get it all done, you know, in time. So the teachers are not going to yell at them in class. Mm -hmm. Right. Just ignore that. In fact, I, I would encourage you if you are happen to be in a 3d class, talk to your teacher, tell them very explicitly, like I want to be a character artist or a concept artist. Mm -hmm. And I want to devote a lot of my time and effort to 2d, you know, and they might have opinions about this, Mm -hmm. and you should respect their opinion um just tell them like look like i really want to focus on 2d because it's really competitive and it's very challenging and i understand how challenging it is and i understand the the scope of the needs i'll have to provide in my portfolio for this so if it's possible i, I will still do the homework assignments and i'll still show up you know but in class whatever or whatever like if I show you kind of my 2D work that I did, you know, uh, alongside my 3D, can you help like give me a passing grade, like a C, you know? And I did that. I did that at AI uh, when I went to AI and uh, some of my teachers were cool with that. Like I had a rigging teacher and I told him that and he was just like, yeah, man, that's fine. And I literally did nothing until the midterm and final. I only turned in the midterm and I only turned in the final. Mm -hmm. And I just literally just learned everything I needed to learn the day before each of those events. And I submitted stuff and I, ironically, like I got like a, a C plus in the class uh, because of what we agreed to. But like, ultimately he was like, he was like, this is actually really good rigging. <laughs> like I actually did really good rigging compared to my, my classmates who were just like, uh, were actually paying attention and actually doing every assignment. <laughs> and they still weren't doing good work you know mm -hmm. and i was just kind of like it was more of like a joke to me i'm just like trying to get it through because i'm in the school i respect like the rules whatever but mm -hmm. i also knew that it was going to be really hard to become a concept artist so i really wanted to sp spend all my time doing concept art you know yeah and um yeah it was really funny to me that that's how it turned out you know and um my uh my my rigging teacher was impressed with the work and I did it anyway. And it worked out great. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I had a modeling teacher, his same thing. He did the same thing for me. That one was not as, uh, as impressive. I definitely did a crappy 3d model, <laughs> you know, but I was, whenever we were just like workshopping in class, like we would work on our models, whatever I was not, but I was concepting my model design. You know what I mean? For mm -hmm. my class. And then I would model my concept. So I was like primarily focusing on concepting my model. You understand? Mm -hmm. And then I made my concept in reality, which was actually pretty cool. It was pretty fun to like try to create my concept. And I think there's something nice that you learn about like, okay, I should have been a little more generous with what I was putting in my concept because um, it was really challenging to model it. You know, I didn't really have enough information, you know? So you start to like respect the other discipline in a way that you wouldn't if you didn't ever try it, you know? But uh, by no means, whatever I did was like close to like portfolio. portfolio. It was pretty, I was not happy with it. Um, but I didn't care, you know, because I was like, I'm concept guy, concept guy. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, don't worry about what other people are doing, man. Just worry about yourself. And talk to your, talk to your, your, your teachers and see if they'll, will throw you a bone in this way you might be surprised yeah. you know especially if you talk to them very reasonably and very respectfully 
uh-huh. you know, and you're very smart about it. Like if you come in and you show them like your game plan, you show them references of artwork that you wanted to kind of achieve. And you have like, a, like, here's what I'm planning for the class. Like, I want to do like these types of drawings. Can this be my homework? You know, and if I don't do this, you can act as if I didn't do the other stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and if you feel like you don't want to say that out loud, you can say it after class to this, to the teacher, you know? So you kind of like not like make them look like uh, they have, like they can do whatever you say, you know? Just like, mm-hmm. just be, just kind of like play it by ear. Like what you think makes sense with your instructors, right? Mm-hmm. And if they say no, and they don't respect your goals, you know, and your ambitions, uh, do it anyway and just get a barely passing class, uh, Mm -hmm. passing grade in that class. Like Mm -hmm. get D's, get degrees, you know what I mean? And so, because your goal isn't to be a moderate 3D artist, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, you're not going to get really good at 3D uh, in that amount of time. You would have to spend years to really get good at it, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, which is what you're doing with the 2D stuff, right? So mm-hmm. it makes sense that you just might as well just treat that time as like, you'll just do real quick concepts, you know? And uh, I'm sorry, not quick concepts, quick models and designs for that class and that class alone, you know? Mm-hmm. So that way you don't, um, you don't waste too much of your time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I get it. I get like the the challenges of like seeing everybody else do it and you're like the fear of like, am I making a mistake by going all in, you know? And yeah. uh, the answer to that question is you're not making a mistake. Your peers are making the mistake of not going all in on something. Okay. Yeah, and uh, the way they like to, to explain this, I'll, I'll do a more thorough explanation in just a second. But ultimately... Uh, specialists get paid more too. Mm-hmm. And the reason why is because um, you're doing a specialized skill that takes a lot of effort to get good at. And when you're not practicing that, you know what? This hand thing is just all messing me up. It's weird. It looks good from this angle, but it looks like trash from the other angle. Mm-hmm. I wonder why. Oh, yeah. uh, you know what? I think that's why I didn't have enough description of the form. Um, <clears throat> oh, you know what else? I think this hand is just too tiny. It's like the perspective. Or oh, you know what? It could be the head too. What the? Um, so a thing that I think, um, like this, this is why I don't teach uh, in a curriculum style. Mm-hmm. my mentorship is because oh uh, yeah it's definitely a perspective problem um it's because of the problems i just mentioned right mm-hmm. because people are at a different pace you know like you need to work at a pace that will help you get better mm-hmm. and if i am like um if i am saying, all right, you know, this is what you did, but you know, you better get onto the iterations now because whatever, Mm -hmm. versus what I really gave you, right? More demon studies and creature studies, right? Mm -hmm. And because that's what you should be practicing. You you did a good job, but you still clearly need to practice it more, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what you should be doing. You shouldn't be like, we shouldn't just move on to the next assignment, Mm -hmm. right? We should wait till you understand what the previous assignment was all about you know, this, this class is not based off of grades. We're not, I'm not going to give you a certificate at the end of the class. What I'm going to give you is like knowledge and ability to improve. Right. And that's supposed to help you well beyond the class. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it would be weird for me to be like, all right, you know, you did, you did okay job. Let's now move on to the next thing where schools do this a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. And you might get like a C, you might even get A's in your class because you just did the assignment and your teachers like want to reward your effort. So they'll give you A's, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and here's the problem is that the degree and your grades don't reflect the quality of your portfolio. And so you might have this sense of like, Oh, you know, I'm getting these good grades, so I must be doing great. 
And then when you go and show your portfolio to a real client, they're like, no, this is pretty trash. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you just like pass school barely, uh, and this is not based off of the advice I gave you, this is more just like, you just try to get the degree because you think having the degree will then get you jobs. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the great lie of, um, our generation mm -hmm. at college, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and you go and you say, oh, now I have a degree and you go apply for jobs and everyone's like looking at your artwork and they're like, this is trash. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're like, no, of course we're not going to give you a job. And you're yeah. just like, what? <laughs> you're so confused. Mm -hmm. so you spent all those years practicing and training where at least you thought you were. And then they're like, no, this is all pretty much useless to all of us, mm -hmm. you know? And you have no, you have no conceptual idea of why, because you've been trained to do stuff regardless of how good it is. Because if schools were genuinely based, like if I was to build a school that would pass people and give a piece, a piece of paper to somebody as a certificate, like as a uh, demonstration of their quality of what they did, it would not be based off of assignment submission, mm -hmm. right? It would be based off of um, if they would get a job from it. So if I mm -hmm. say, okay, for this class, you guys are doing character designs, yeah? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the class, I'm going to give you a grade based off of whether you get a job. And if you submit all your homework and you do all that stuff, I'm looking at it, I'm like, all right, I'm giving you a D. And you're like, what? But I did all your thumbnails. I spent like hundreds of hours in this class, like painting and drawing, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yep, you just need to spend another 200 hours because it's still mm -hmm. not there. It doesn't mean you can't get there. It's just like, it's, it'll be a lie to just say it because, because you went and did all my work and did my curriculum that I should just give you a passing grade and I would be tricking you, mm -hmm. you know? Because once you leave and nobody gives you a job, you know, you're going to be really shocked. This shock should come now, mm -hmm. right? Well, while you're still in my class, while there's still opportunity to instruct you. But I don't believe in that system anyway, but if I had to build one, that's what it would look like, you know? Mm -hmm. Because um, companies don't hire average artists, they hire good artists. Companies mm -hmm. don't let you get away with C work, right? Like, it's not like if you submit something for me, I'm gonna be like, how the fuck did dare you? And like, like, get super angry. Or if you do like a poor job, mm -hmm. right? Like the horse design, right? And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> You're the worst artist. I don't get like on your case. We're all having a good time with it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was even giving you advice of saving it because it's going to be inspirational in the future for sure. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. But then I went on to what you're doing good, what you should work on. Let's move on, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's how it should be. Find your pace. Let's work at your pace. When you're at a studio, they're not going to do that. If you drew a crappy horse design, they're going to be like, what the fuck? Do it, do it again. Mm -hmm. And then you have another chance. And if you do it again, if you fail again, you're fired. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the difference. It's not a school. They're not going to teach you how to make your horse design better. Mm -hmm. The whole idea is when someone looks at your portfolio, like they're looking at this illustration right now, right? The idea is that when you look at this illustration and you're a client of mine, you look at this and you're saying to yourself, this is what I want him to do for me. Mm -hmm. Because he could already already do it. Make sense? When I walk into the doors of that studio or where I work, I open up my Photoshop file to start working on the design that was asked of me. I'm not going to ask them how to paint. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to ask them how to design. If, in fact, if anything, they're going to be asking me questions about what I think, which does happen. You know, especially nowadays as I become more pro prolific you know, well known for this type of stuff. People mm -hmm. actually, clients will, this has never happened really that much in the beginning, but now they do, like people are like, like, what do you think of this design? Like with some other artists did this design, what do you think? It's kind of like free consultation if I'm doing that, you know? Mm -hmm. But I do it anyway because I, I don't mind helping out the client in that way, you know? If it becomes like a regular thing where I start to realize, okay, I should be charging for this, I will, but not right now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, I definitely don't do that just for people that message me on whatever random social media. I don't just give them free advice um, whenever and however. I will give them quick and meaningful 
words, but I, that's it, you know, because that's my job is to teach people and people pay me for that, like more direct advice, like you're getting right now, you know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but my point is, is that like, that's what you're paying for, right? Like, that's what, you know, you've seen me do a tutorial, you've seen my work, you have enough evidence to believe that what I'm about to tell you has some bearing in truth and reality, and it's going to guide you well, right? And so that's what your portfolio should be doing too. If a client looks at your portfolio and they're just like, I don't have any idea if this person is going to be capable of doing what I'm asking them to do, then you need to fix that. And schools don't do a good job of teaching this. They're just not built this way, specifically accredited schools. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because accredited schools and the whole college system, uh, specifically in the US, was built around industry. Mm -hmm. There was a time in our history where people needed to learn stuff in an efficient way and colleges were invented for this. Uh, and then f whenever you start putting money in education in this way, uh, people will find a fucking way to make more money. Mm -hmm. And when you scale it up the way that they did, then they'll, they're going to cut corners and they're going to start telling lies. I remember when I went to AI, they were like, we have a 91% placement, uh, our graduates. And that's a really high placement. So you're thinking, I'm going to have a high percentage of like getting a job in this industry, dude, just like by going here. Mm -hmm. And as time went on, I discovered not only was that a lie, that all the people that were employed like the way that that lie was built was like any job mm. so like you had people that would work at mcdonald's they would count that <laughs> you yeah. know you had people that would work at disney i live in california southern california that it, that included people who did like uh uh a face painting for like kids mm. uh, not talking crap about face painting as a as a job i'm just saying that's not what these people expected from a $70,000 tuition, what they would be doing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that was kind of my first clue. And I noticed that a lot of the teachers, the instructors that were teaching me at the school used to be students who couldn't get jobs. And so it was kind of like I was being taught by people who they themselves didn't even know what it was like to work in the industry. Mm -hmm. Some of them great, gave out great advice. Some of them had no clue what they're talking about. And I only learned that after uh, leaving school, which I dropped out of. I dropped out because I um, realized it was a joke. Mm -hmm. Which you might realize too. I don't know what school you go to, but uh, you might. Elkhead. Oh no, Elkhead's good. Elkhead's a good one. Elkhead's great. Uh, I think Elkhead is a good one uh, because there's a lot of good teachers and a lot of good people there that actually care mm -hmm. about you. Um, I think I, you know what, it's funny because I did teach at LCAD, right? Mm -hmm. And you know what's funny is when I taught at LCAD, I, um, I don't know if you heard this, but like I, uh, I got kicked out of teaching there because, really? I would, because I would say what I'm saying to you now. <laughs> wow. Wow. You know, you can imagine if I'm like, school's fucking bullshit. <laughs> They're just like, and I would tell them because I can't, I don't like lying to people to their face, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like it's a problem mm -hmm. i want them to know i want my students to be, to be prepared you know i don't want them to like go into this the, into their careers with this false expectation mm -hmm. so yeah you know elcat's a great example of like it's a good school man because it has a lot of good resources it's just that they still follow that accreditation and so they're still kind of flawed for that mm -hmm. same reason but i know like you know some of the people there and they're, they 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 know this too you know so they're, mm -hmm. they're trying to find ways to help the students. So, and I think with, with that new piece of information you just given me, I think a lot of the teachers would be on your side if you asked them, I only want to do 2D, you know? Mm -hmm. A lot of them would, you know what I mean? Yeah. And if, if they don't, and you say, well, you know, this artist named Anthony Jones told me that this is a good strategy, you know? <laughs> you, can, you, you can name drop if you want. <laughs> and it might help you, it might not. It might make you look more pretentious <laughs> but either either way uh just let them know like you're not trying to like step on their like curriculum or their strategy of teaching you, it's just you don't want to learn 3d mm -hmm. you know wait hold on just a second
All right, sorry. My wife was asking me if I was going to be done soon. But does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I, and I think we, I, now that I'm thinking about it, we met at LCAD, right? Is this correct? Uh, yeah, and I That's also right. Met, uh, the paint one mixer that you That's have. right. Now it's yeah. all coming together. I'm like, oh, okay, I think I know who I'm talking to. <laughs> I, I didn't connect it. Now it makes sense. Yeah, no, no, you're 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 good. I think LCAT's fine. Uh, I know a lot of people who've graduated from LCAT and done fine. Um, LCAT's uh, one of the better schools in California. Uh, I think there's a few. Uh, LCAT is really good. Um, Art Center is really great. Nomen is mostly for three D, but it's good if you want to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, but then that's pretty much it. Every other school's kind of garbage. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you should try to take classes at Brainstorm. Mm -hmm. That's the next step you should do. You should do like get some of that extra education outside of LCAD. That's mm -hmm. that's what's going to be happening. And when you go to the, uh, uh, Brainstorm or any of these places, right? You mm -hmm. should focus on the stylized stuff or the kind of work that you kind of want to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I know for a fact Brainstorm folks are going to be okay. They also have a curriculum. Uh, and that's mainly because like John and James, the guys who made who made Brainstorm are from that world, mm -hmm. you know? And so they have that kind of philosophy, but they're, they are also like pretty lenient about like how education is and stuff too. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're in the right direction. I just still think curriculum strategy is not the best, but that's kind of how they built their school. And I'm not mad at them for it. Uh, there is, there is value in having some structure to uh, your growth, but I think personally it's best to just focus in on one thing and just stay focused on that one thing. Mm -hmm. I'll prove it to you. Watch, I'll show you. So um, go to ArtStation, right? Or DeviantArt or whatever you prefer, mm -hmm. or go to both, it doesn't matter. Right, and just like pick like an artist that you think is pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. Like this artist right here, it's like big ass highlight right here. Super <laughs> cool. You know, it's like right in our face, pretty cool. Let's click on it. Pretty dope. Oh, I don't follow this person. It's a concept artist studio. Is it a studio people? So this might not be a good example. We'll find out. No, it's still a pretty good example. Do you see, do you see um, any variety in here? in terms of style and approach? This is not a trick question. What does your guess say? I mean, a little bit, but not. Not really, right? It's all pretty much character illustration, yeah? Would you agree? Yeah. So do you think that's an accident? No. <laughs> right, like that this person or persons, I'm not sure. Because it's just this concept art studio, <laughs> you know, and it doesn't even, it's just, I don't know, and it's from China, which makes me even more suspect. I think this is a person, it could just be a translation problem. Mm -hmm. But Ark Nor does not sound like a Chinese name, so that makes me even more curious. But anyway, irregardless, it's obvious that this is primarily a character illustration, yeah? Mm -hmm. But let's, let's not stop there, let's look at something else. Okay, this is one person, I think. And this person also follows me. I'll follow you back. Ina Wong, or Ina Wong, right? Same question. Do you think there's a lot of diversity in style and approach? Approach meaning like how they do their artwork? No, right? It seems pretty much the same again. Mm -hmm. Does that seem like an accident? No. Right, you're starting to see a pattern here, right? Like people that seem to be really good at like that thing that I'm showing you, like this one is an illustration, right? Mm -hmm. Seems like that's pretty much all they keep doing. Mm -hmm. Let's mix this up. Let's uh, look at some stylized artwork. Do you think Tunza Kwai is going to have some 3D realistic artwork in here? Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't seem like it. seems like even just more of this crazy fucking stylistic stuff. Mm -hmm. As you start to do this, you will find one or two people that might have like a little bit of like a diversity to their portfolio, right? Mm -hmm. Like don't stop with just 2D. Look at 3D artists. Do they have like some 2D concepts in here? Doesn't seem like it. 
I mean, but this is a 3D artist. I'm sure they have some environments too, right? Because three, you can do a 3D environment. Oh, no, it's just characters? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Right? And even like the kind of the characters, you'll start to notice, like very semi-realistic, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not even like, um, like you might think, oh, okay, this one's pretty cool. Let's look at this one. Yeah, like stylistic 3D models. And it only presents four, but even those four were stylistic, realistic, or stylistic 3D characters. You'll start to notice a pattern here, yeah? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm gonna try to find somebody who's, who might have something. Mateo, let's see if Mateo. You know, it looks like hard surface 3D assets. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Seems like AJ is onto something, <laughs> right? I mean, for real though, right? Like you start to investigate for yourself, you're starting to realize like, wait a minute, why isn't there just like a curriculum in my school that's just all about this one specific thing? And that's because a lot of the art schools still don't respect these individual disciplines. Mm -hmm. Right? They don't have a, like, could you imagine if you're trying to be a doctor and then they had dentistry in part of your classes, like you had to learn how to pull people's teeth. Mm -hmm. And then another one, like, let's say you want to be a heart surgeon. That's what you want to do. You want to be a heart surgeon. Mm -hmm. And even at your, like, your, like, last years of <laughs> medical school, right? They're mm -hmm. still making you do stuff like pulling people's teeth, pediatric care, you know? Mm -hmm. like these like side things like that would be in the beginning they'll teach you a lot of these like general practices because mm -hmm. that makes sense like i think that would the equivalent to that would be like doing life drawing doing perspective you know what i mean i think those are important regardless of what discipline you know mm -hmm. but at some point you need to funnel that person's career path if you want to be a character concept artist that should be a very specific path mm -hmm. you know because even there's like different types of heart surgeons you know, you're not just one surgeon that does only all hearts of all kinds. Like there's different types for different things. And there's different doctors for different body parts, right? When I had my brain tumor removed with my brain surgery, I also had my nasal cavity open. And there was two surgeons, one who was the ear, nose, throat doctor and surgeon, mm -hmm. and there was the brain surgeon. And so they both operated me at the same time or at the same session, but they took turns mm -hmm. it wasn't like oh this guy's gonna just also figure out how to open up my nasal cavity he might not actually know enough about the anatomy of the nose to do a proper nose surgery he wouldn't be too ignorant to it but he's not that versed because he didn't go to school for all that right mm -hmm. but yet art school is not treated this way this is why i say you should do specialized schools because that's what you're basically doing you're creating that um path of education for yourself makes sense mm -hmm. which is it's a good it's a good strategy but yeah i mean like i i i keep showing you you know i think you already get it you know oh you follow me too though dude and you follow all these people back yo mm -hmm. all these badasses following me and shit tight i mean where is this guy's photorealistic 3d character props Now let me show you uh, another example. So that's community. That's like the 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 most uh, just like the trending, right? The ones that are people are like clicking on a lot, right? And then there's latest, meaning that whoever just posted recently. Okay. Now if you do this for the most um, recent stuff, you will you most likely will find some diversity in people's artwork. Oh, this person doesn't. This person's on their way. They're on the right path. It's got mostly character stuff. But generally speaking, um, you will find more of this more often. Uh, see, this person does portraits. So I guess the two examples I found are not good examples. I mean, this isn't bad either, but it's just like sometimes whenever I see just a portrait design, I will also see all these other things. And this is not me uh, insulting these artists. This is just me showing you that there is a discrepancy in consistency approach right there's some of these are painted some of these are drawn right mm -hmm. there's some environments in here 
but I'm not going to say that there aren't artists who can do multiple facets of uh, things. Okay. Wait, is it it? Usually you can see like a lot more. Oh, there's just ads in between. I got it. Okay, I don't think these people are bad. No, this only has one person, has one artwork. Uh, they're just starting, you know what I mean? They're just getting going. But you'll see that they'll have this kind of um, like identity crisis. And that's a common symptom of students. Okay? Mm -hmm. Like I know when I'm looking at a student's portfolio, when they have a lot of just average looking artwork of all kinds of genres. They have environments, they have 3Ds, they have characters versus someone who's a little more focused that has just one thing, you know, even if they're a student. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I'll, I would like to think that I was immune to this, like it didn't happen for me. Like I just knew, I figured it out. No, I didn't know either. I, I learned the hard way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So hopefully that gives you some really good insight. Yeah. Yeah, and then I'll see you in the next mixer whenever it happens. Yeah. <laughs> you should go to sketch groups, actually. We do sketch groups every uh, Thursday in, um, in Anaheim. Uh, is there, like, in, where can I find the information for that? Or just, like... Cool, dude. Cool. <laughs> You're just like, what? That doesn't help me at all. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, it's on Facebook. But uh, uh, I don't know how I can give you this information other than just share it on Skype. So I'll just do that. I'll find it and share it on Skype. Okay. But it's at a place called the Unsung Heroes in Anaheim. And I can give you the details. Unsung, not Unsung Heroes, sorry. Unsung Brewery in Anaheim. And it's usually from seven to 11 or till they close, but people usually stay much later and hang out after. And it's on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. uh, I usually go, I usually go. I didn't go this time because I was working. All right, I'll take one more question, y'all. It was a long winded answer, but I think it was a very important one. I don't mind answering important questions. Any other questions? I got a uh, quick one for you. Oh. Uh, just your favorite artist, man, that you totally geek out over. Um, that's a hard one because there's too many. Shit, okay. <laughs> um, but I get it. I get why you would ask that. Uh, and the reason why I answered the way that I do is because it, it's one of those things It's like, um, uh, if I say somebody, it's not, it's not going to give you the answer that you were, you were hoping for. Um, or like, it's not going to answer or scratch the itch, um, realistically. Like the reason why you ask that question usually subconsciously is maybe you want to like see what artist really influences me and maybe potentially learn from them as well. And that's true. That's a good kind of subconscious insight, you know? Gotcha. But the problem is, is that like, I literally can think of hundreds, you know? Yeah. Like I can, I can do it right now. I can just start li listing them off. Right. right? You got Sargent, you got uh, JC Landecker, you got um, Jeremy Geddes, Phil Hale, Ryan Minerding, Charlie Wen, Jason Chan. Like these are some heavy hitters, man. Wes Burt, um, right. I like Rich Anderson, my buddy Jama is a huge influence on me. Like there's so many, man. And there's yeah. a lot more artists that I don't even know their names. I just know their artwork, <laughs> you know? Right, right. Uh, Sean Gordon Murphy, uh, freaking uh, Jorge Jimenez. I think that's how you say it. Olivia uh, Ariel Arielati. I can't say his last name. Um, Addy Gradnov. And the way I think about it too is like they're all looking over my shoulder every time I make a paint stroke. Right. You know, but I will answer the question in a way that kind of satisfies the question, at least right now. 
but I want to like preface it with what I just said, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I got you. So the answer that I, I would say, and if the question was more like if you were on a desert Island or if you could ever sit in a room with this person or whatever, right. 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 Like if I only had to pick one person, like one artist, that person will probably be like JC Landecker. Huh? It would be Landecker for sure. Yeah, I guess what kind of like pushed me to ask it is like I have people at work or, you know, just random people ask like, oh, what are your favorite artists? And sometimes I just blank on the answer. It's like, I know I have favorites, but then it also makes me feel like maybe I haven't experienced enough of professionals and greats and masters, you know. So it's uh, another reason why I kind of brought it up. Yeah, I would say Linebacker for sure. If I had to just, like if I if I was just starting art, and I could only look at one artist to teach me everything that I would want to be good at. Uh, Line Decker would be by far one of them. Yeah. Um, I learned a lot from him. Like one of the art books that I looked at a lot when I first started was one of his books. Yeah, uh, I liked his confidence of painting. It really promoted my inspiration to be a little more confident. Hmm. <clears throat> See, I like answers like that because as I always feel ridiculous just being like, oh, like I love Frank Rosetta. It's like, well, everyone loves Frank Rosetta. Like, yeah, he's so another one of those examples. Yeah, like that. I like him too. Yeah. But that's that's exactly right. It's like I don't really – like I can't answer that question honestly without going on a 15-minute rant about all the different <laughs> artists. And then I can go on an hour on each artist why I like them. In fact, this is – the inspiration um, for a YouTube series I'm putting together where oh, nice. I call it, why the fuck is that so good? Um, <laughs> but it's like bleeped out. Yeah. And essentially it's just me picking an artist and explaining why I love this artist's work. Ooh, that's there's gonna a, be really interesting. There's a lot of people out there who uh, talk a lot of trash about a lot of things and there's a lot of negativity. And I'm like, I need to try to bring some positive education information not negative you know not like um, nihilistic or or negative in nature even if it's unintentional i want to like try to balance it out i think it's right. good to be skeptical but if it, everyone's like freaking talking shit about everything it's like okay that's not true either anyway hope that satisfies that that itch oh yeah totally i appreciate like the uh perspective you took on it yeah another question that i don't like answering <laughs> is a question that's uh well just because those questions i don't think uh, are good questions like you shouldn't ask um what why or what someone's favorite artist is right it's unless it's just like you're just curious and you just want to like have a fun answer but if you're like generally trying to improve your artwork, that's not a that's not a question that will lead you to a good answer usually. Right. No, uh, what, I agree. Yeah. So I I would say in the future, like uh, a good question would be like, uh, which artists do you think you know really taught you a lot about edge control, or which artists do you think gave you the best examples of controlling perspective or form? You know what I mean? Like, have like a specific skill, and then then attach an artist. You know, because then you'll you'll have that artist think about it, and usually then they will start to think about like why that's true, and then you might get some nuggets of fucking golden information. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be um, a little bit less broad. Yeah, if, the more abstract you are with your questions, the more abstract your answers are most likely going to be. Right. Unless you're dealing with someone like me, who's like a professional educator who's been asked those questions millions of times. Yeah, exactly. And then, <laughs> And then I will have a more profound answer usually because I've answered it and I'm like, okay, there needs to be a better way to answer this question because people are not going to stop, keep asking this question, you know? And so like uh, another good example is like, uh, what would you do differently if you can go back in time? And so my answer to that would be, I wouldn't do anything <laughs> because the reason why I am the artist I am today is because of all those things that happened. Exactly. You know? And uh, that's a much better answer than like, oh, change this. Cause that's not necessarily realistic. Right. So, 
Um, but I've been asked that question quite often. And again, I don't mind hearing those questions. Uh, my advice is just to the student or the person to think differently. Be gotcha. a better question asker. It's not a bad question. You need answers. You're, you don't know. You're naive. I get it. You know, nothing wrong about yeah. that. I wasn't like full of knowledge when I started out. You know, I asked stupid questions or questions that weren't helpful. And I learned that I wasn't getting, like, I remember I asked the artist once, it's like, why did you, uh, like, when you do colors or something, like, I forget, it was like very stupid. It was just like, when you, when, what do you do when you're painting colors? Like, what are you thinking? Like, those are too general. Right? Right. And I learned that because he didn't have a good answer. And I was like, oh, man, <laughs> I don't know nothing. Uh, so <laughs> instead, I'm like, um, uh, I would ask more fundamentally. Like, I used to ask more fundamental like questions like, he's like, so when you're putting in um, the cool colors, are you doing that to help push the composition? Or are you doing that because it just feels good? You know, I would just like, I would just like ask a question that would be more of like in the form of a hypothesis of that I had of what I think he's thinking or she's thinking. And then hopefully they'll either confirm or deny, right? So I'm already, I already kind of have a suspicion of why they may do it, but I need confirmation. Either I'm wrong or right. You know what I mean? Because I think if you focus in on just like a generalization, hoping that they're gonna unload, you might fall into a trap, you know? Like, and I remember I asking somebody about that, like, I was like, what do you think about like this? And then they're like, I don't really think about much. I just put it in there because it looks cool. And even though that seems like a very like shallow answer, that was a good answer for me because then I realized, okay, so some people just do stuff because of instinct. Makes sense. Right. You know, so I thought about it. I was like, that's, that's pretty insightful for me. You know, because if I would have just asked, well, what do you think about when you're doing color, you know? Uh, he could have answered it the same way, but I'm not sure, like, I'm not sure if that would really make me feel satisfied versus where I had a guess and he basically destroyed my guess, right? Or confirms what I've done and explains it extens extensively, <laughs> like why I'm right. And I'm like, awesome. But uh, ask, don't ever feel stupid though, if you ask stupid questions. Cause you might need to learn what that feels like too. <laughs> yeah. No. Just keep doing it until uh, you start to get better at asking questions. It's the same way, way I feel about studying. I think a lot of people don't know how to study properly. And then when they start to study really well, then they start to see the flaws of the original process. But it's one of those, like you don't learn it until you try it kind of thing. Right. You got to go so, through the motions. Yeah. But anyway, I'm going to end the class on that note though. Cool. Um, yeah, great questions. Great uh, work, everybody. I think you guys are all killing it, man. I'm pretty happy with the results thus far. I'm very proud of y'all. Keep up the hard work. Hope you guys enjoyed the demo. And uh, I'll see you guys uh, next week. Cheers, friends. Sweet. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.